I love talking about my different fandoms and favorite video games and movies and TV shows as much as the next person, but there are things happening right now in our country that need to be talked about. It's political, it's not good news, it's things that are uncomfortable to talk about but that need to be talked about and need to be brought attention to. People need to know and stay informed of what is going on. Below in my video description there is an ever-growing list of people, social media accounts, organizations, and websites that are standing up to the hatred and violence we are seeing by our quote-unquote President Trump check out any of the links and social media accounts that I have at the bottom of my description to stay informed and to find out how you can help fight back. Just like Captain America said that it doesn't matter what the mobs or the politicians tells you. It doesn't matter if so many of them is saying something wrong is something right. And if they come to you saying that, telling you to move, it is your job to stand there and plant yourself beside the river of truth and say no you move. Hatred and ignorance and fear is not what makes our country great. Hey geeks, what's happening? Welcome to my channel. I'm Trey Guillotine and today we are geeking out about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and the top three Star Wars video games. But first, I got one question for you. What you gaming on? If you want to tell me what you're gaming on and have your answer featured in an upcoming video, let me know the game you're playing, what you like about it, and what you don't like about it. Leave that in a comment on this video or on any of my social media and your answer will be featured in an upcoming episode. We're going to go ahead and jump in to what I've been gaming on lately and I've actually been playing Final Fantasy XIV, which I have to say... This is the second time I'm trying to play it. I played it way back when it first came out, when it was like brand new, and it just didn't really sync with me. I wasn't really into it. I didn't like the UI or the control schemes, and it was just, it was really, I don't know. I don't know if it was just because it was raw when it first came out, and now it's a little bit more polished, but I'm liking it a lot more now than I did when it first came out, and I'm actually getting really into it. Uh, it definitely has some low points and some kinks to work out, like the targeting system is kind of weird. I'm playing on the PS4, so I'm playing it on a console, not a PC. So the targeting system's a little bit weird. Uh, it doesn't like you, you try to target something, but it targets something else and you have to like switch through the different UIs to get to the right target. Uh, it also doesn't tell you a lot of stuff that I think would be good to know. Like they do have a transmog system, which I had to find out just through like Googling. It'd been nice to know that there was something in place from like the beginning or even a way to dye your clothes or like I'm trying to like right now I'm trying to like get into the rogue class which I actually only accidentally found out about so I'm trying to do that and then I'm trying to also get the esthetician so that I can change my hair and all this other stuff like there's a lot the game doesn't tell you which to be fair it doesn't guide you by the hand as you're playing it it does kind of let you figure things out for yourself but like a, just a little bit more guidance would be good uh but yes for the most part i'm actually really enjoying it playing it the second time through i'm getting really into it especially now that i know i can get like past final fantasy fan past final fantasy character outfits which uh that was kind of like sealing the deal for me right there uh but overall i'm enjoying it but that's what i've been gaming on now i want to hear what you've been gaming on so let me know in the comments or on any of my social media and your answer will be featured in an upcoming episode so the other game that I've been playing lately, not as much, I've already beaten it, uh, but the other game I've been playing was Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And it's the big, like, it's the, you know, the newest Star Wars game to come out. It's, re it's, it's regarded as canon, so as part of the actual, like, Star Wars saga. It's not like a Star Wars legend like the Expanded Universe used to be. It's, it's like, part of the actual Skywalker Star Wars canon. So this is something that has actually taken place within Star Wars, which is pretty cool. Overall, I'm enjoying the game. Like, it's, it's a solid game game the mechanics are really good and it's a lot of fun to play it 
it this but i mean it's it's also got its fair share of weaknesses the things i do like about it is that one like i said the, the mechanics are really good you get to customize your lightsaber in a bunch of different ways you can have like you actually get the option to have all three a single double bladed and then dual lightsaber like fighting style which is really awesome uh and then you can also like customize what out or what poncho cal is wearing cal the main character the jedi is the main character his name is cal and you get to like choose what poncho he wears or you can take it off and he has like different colors of his regular clothing uh so i'm all for more customization so i'm really happy with that i also really like the lore that it's pulling from like it's taken a lot of stuff from the like Star Wars animated series like Clone Wars and uh, Star Wars Rebels like it there's a big emphasis on the Inquisitors which is something I'm not 100% sure if that was something that Star Wars Rebels took from the EU or from the Star Wars Legends but it is something that is like a big deal in Star Wars Rebels so I was glad to see that there's just a lot of emphasis on it being in that time period between the rise of the Empire and the fall of the Empire so it's pretty much it takes place probably think about 10 10 15 years after uh episode three so it does take a lot of lore from that in between section which i think is really cool because that's not something we've really gotten to see too much of outside of star wars rebels so it does it does take a lot of cool things from from like those different aspects of lore that i really do like where the game kind of falters uh the so the graphics they're good they're not great, especially when there are plenty of times when you're either running through a level or you're in a or you're in a cutscene. Uh, there's like you'll see in the background the the graphics are like constantly changing and flickering between like being blurry and being clear. The other thing is that I had at least half a dozen crashes. The game was about probably ten to twenty hours long in like story length maybe maybe a little bit more uh through that time i had about half a dozen crashes like just for no reason the game would just crash on me which that was actually really annoying because then i would go back and it would basically have me starting at the beginning of the level or the planet that i'd just gone to so that was really kind of frustrating actually maybe not want to play the rest of the game for a little bit while but then i you know i made myself get back into it and beat it um Finally, the story, while the story is okay, and it's about, like, you know, Jedi trying to survive in this new Empire era and trying to restore the Jedi Order, like, they find, like, this holocron that has all of the, like, basically has, like, a growing list of Force-sensitive kids so that they can go and try to, like, rebuild the Jedi Order. Uh, that's kind of the main part of the story, and then there's also the Inquisitors and some other aspects of the story, but that's, like, the main gist of it, but overall, all it wasn't like the story wasn't a surprise there was nothing in there that really took me by surprise like as it was happening i was like okay this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this is going to happen uh there was no real sense of like oh man i didn't see that coming uh it was just kind of it was definitely telegraphed like it was very obvious the the sequence the sequence of events that was going to be taking place. Uh, so like this like I said the story was okay, but it wasn't great. Uh, some articles I've seen when it recently came out is that people are calling it like oh this is such a good game this is such a great Star Wars game it's the best Star Wars game to come out in so long and I found myself really disagreeing with that. Uh, I don't think it's. I don't think it's the best Star Wars game to come out in a while. I don't even think it's the best Star Wars game, period. Like, it definitely has some issues that make it not that great of a game. And then there's just the other kind of, like, mediocre, like, yeah, it's kind of fun. But overall, just kind of, uh. So I kind of wanted to offer my own input onto what I think are the top three Star Wars video games which Jedi Fallen Order is not anywhere on the list. So, to start with number three, you're going to disagree with this, and I know I'm going to get flack for this, but just bear with me for a minute. Star Wars Battlefront 2, the new Battlefront 2, not the old Battlefront 2, although the old Battlefront 2 was pretty amazing. But Star Wars Battlefront 2, the new one that came out over the past couple years, yes, that game is very flawed. There are a lot of faults, there are a lot of shortcomings with it, 
Uh, but I honestly feel like those shortcomings are more EA's fault and not so much the game itself uh, in terms of them trying to like get greedy with their lockbox, with their loot boxes and just kind of, you know, having everything be like you have to grind a million hours and get this many loot boxes so you can unlock these kits, so you can unlock these characters. Like, I feel like that's an EA problem in any of their games, not just Star Wars Battlefront 2. Also, yes, the story campaign that is in it is very short. Despite all of that, despite EA's corporate greedy corporate culture of any games they produce, or the tragically short story campaign, Star Wars Battlefront II is still a really solid game in its own right. The story campaign, as short as it is, is really interesting and it's new and it's fresh. It's telling the story of Erden Versio, who is an Imperial Stormtrooper. She's like, she's like Special Ops Stormtrooper. And it kind of tells the story of what her perspective is of the Rebellion as someone who grew up worshiping the Empire. And then she kind of like has her perspective changed throughout the story. And you kind of see like you see that character growth go. Uh, and it, you know, it's not something that happens because the game because the story campaign takes place literally like right after the end of Return of the Jedi. So like right after the destruction of the second Death Star is when the story picks up. Uh, and then it kind of takes you through the real end of the war uh, that, you know, Return of the Jedi wasn't the end of the war. You know, the end of the war happened a little bit later on. Um, but it's a really good story. It's a really interesting story. And as short as it is, it it really, it it shows us some new things we haven't seen before. Like it shows us the end of the, it shows us the true end of the rebellion. It shows us some of the stuff that happened between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, it, you know, brings us to some really some re really amazing battlegrounds. The mechanics of the game are solid. Like, even if you're not playing the story mode, which that's always my favorite part of just about any game I play, is I live for playing the story mode and having, like, a single-player campaign. But even playing in the multiplayer, which is obviously its biggest thing, like, it's still a fun experience. And the mechanics are really well-polished. So, like, overall, like, yes, the game has flaws and it has shortcomings. But despite that, it's still a really good game. The second best Star Wars game, in my opinion, is The Force Unleashed. Number one, not number two. Number two was like, what, 10 minutes long and the story was very not great. One of the best Star Wars games out there, in my opinion. Number two, it is the second best Star Wars game out there. The combat is actually very similar to Jedi Fallen Order, or you could say that Jedi Fallen Order's combat is similar to The Force Unleashed. But it also tells the story of Darth Vader's secret apprentice, uh, Starkiller, and how like Vader basically sent Starkiller to gather the leaders of the Rebellion or the potential leaders of the Galactic Rebellion so that they could then use them to overthrow the Emperor. But then like the Emperor gets involved and Vader basically chooses sides and like throws Starkiller to the wolves. And then Starkiller uses the allies he just got to then go up against Vader and the Empire. So it's a really good story. Uh, the mechanics of it, again, they're not, they're probably not as polished as they are in Jedi Fallen Order because you're, the like the way that you have to like use the force to push and pull things can be a little confusing as you're trying to do it with the joysticks and that gets a little messed up um but it really is just is a hack and slash game like you're running through a level force pushing and pulling and using a lightsaber to cut literally everyone and everything that's in your path uh it's a lot of fun like, it's a really fun game. It tells us, again, it tells us something new. Like, it tells this new story that we've never heard before, or as far as I know, we've never heard before about Vader having, like, this secret apprentice that he's training to help overthrow the Emperor. Because if you're a Sith Lord and you're not trying to overthrow your master, then you're not doing the whole Sith thing correctly. Uh, so it was just, it's a really great game and the story is really strong and it's really interesting and the way it's told is it's very well done and the, the, the actual mechanics of it are just a lot of fun because you can definitely be very like overpowered in that game and just cut your way through everything. Like even when you're fighting like Rancors or, uh, a, or, uh, Empire ATSTs or ATATs, like at one point you bring, a. a freaking imperial cruiser like you basically that's up in space from the planet that you're on you basically like crush it with the force and it's 
kind of amazing. Uh, so yeah, that is my second best Star Wars game. And now for the first best Star Wars game, the best Star Wars game, at least as far as I've played, the best, and it shouldn't be a surprise, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which came out, what, 15, 20 years ago? And it is still such a great game. I've been playing on it just a little bit because with Star Wars coming out, you know, this week, uh, I really just kind of wanted to immerse myself in Star Wars. I was like, you know what? I haven't played Knights of the Old Republic in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and jump into that and play it for a little bit. And it holds up. Uh, I mean, obviously the game is very dated, but if you like Bioware's other titles like Dragon, I mean, if you like Dragon Age, it's essentially the same kind of mechanics and combat as Dragon Age or specifically Dragon Age Origins. Like I feel like Knights of the Old Republic was kind of like the prototype of Dragon Age Origins. Uh, and so the mechanics are still like pretty good. The graphics are, they're not great. They are what they are. They're not terrible. Um, the story, but the story is obviously the best part. It's this big art role-playing game, Star Wars RPG, about, uh, that was a thousand, that takes place a thousand years ago, before the Galactic Empire and everything that happens in the Skywalker Star Wars saga. Um, this happens a thousand years ago, and it's about this other war between the Republic and the Sith, and the story is just amazing, especially when you're playing this character that you're creating, like it's your character. But then you find out at the end that your character is actually Darth Revan, who was like the big bad Sith Lord of the time that, again, his apprentice, Darth Malak, uh, tried to kill off. But he met, but he didn't kill him, they just like basically knocked him out. And then the Jedi kind of reworked his brain so that he could not remember who he was as Revan and they could kind of manipulate him to find the power behind Revan and Malik's big star fleet, which that you basically follow in those footsteps until at the end you discover, holy shit, you're Darth Revan. Like you are Darth Revan, you're this big, and you can decide, do you want to be, uh, do you want to be Darth Revan? Do you want to, like, come back as the Sith Lord Darth Revan? Do you want to be a good guy? Do you want to not do either? Like, it really was one of the big first games, at least as far as I know, that was, like, very, he was, like, heavily dependent on the choices you made. There were different, there were different ways you could play it. Uh, light side, dark side, even gray side. You could be a Jedi right in the middle between the force, uh, between light and dark. It was just, it was a really amazing game. And for those first playing it, and I'm sorry, it's 15 years old, spoiler alert, uh, for those playing it for the first time, it was like, holy crap. Like that, that was a surprise. Like, I'm not saying that all good stories need to have a twist, but it was definitely a good twist. It was one that you didn't see coming. And I feel like if you're gonna have a twist, then it shouldn't be something you can guess like halfway there. It should be something that takes you by surprise and that's was it. That's what, that's what Night of the Old Republic was. Uh, I can't say Knights of the Old Republic 2 because I did play it, but I, I don't remember much from it. Like I hardly even remember the actual story behind Knights of the Old Republic 2, whereas Knights of the Old Republic, I clearly remember the majority of that game because that's how good it was. That's the impact that it left. So it, it I think it is a very justifiable, uh, ju like I feel like naming it the best Star Wars game is very justified. So those are my top three Star Wars games. Uh, if you wanna let me know what your top three or what your favorite Star Wars game is, let me know in the comments of this video or on any of my social media. And we're gonna go ahead and get excited about Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker coming out this week, Thursday or technically Friday, technically Thursday, whichever day it actually comes out because there's always the soft opening and the hard opening. Um, so we're looking forward to that. I'm very excited for it. I hope you're very excited for it. Uh, let me know what your favorite Star Wars games are in the links of the, in the comments or on any social media, along with any of the games that you've been gaming on so your answer can be, can be featured in an upcoming video. Uh, that's all I've got today. So uh, check out all my content on my website, treyguillotine.blogspot.com, or on any of my, or all the videos that are already in my YouTube or also on my blog site, as well as articles that I've contributed and written for the UNO Driftwood. Check that out on my website. Uh, so, uh, follow me on all the internets and subscribe to my channel to geek out some more. May the force be with you.